Hello, good evening, everyone. My pleasure, Ghost Hunter. Uh, it's that time again for uh, 8 p.m. till 9 p.m. I've got a very, very special guest uh, joining me to, uh, this evening by the name of um, Gavin Rafter. He's a psychic medium. Uh, Gavin, <laughs> Sorry, I missed what you asked there, Mark. How are you doing, Gavin? How's things? Um, good, very good. Missing the paranormal, though. So I'm glad I'm... lockdown's sort of over for events. Yeah, I'm missing it as well. I haven't been out for, my God, the last investigation I think that I went on was around about six, seven months ago. It was, it was quite a while ago. Yeah, well, I've done one outside that I found a haunted woods near me. Uh, okay. I didn't know they were haunted, because we walked the dogs there. And I um, always felt like we were watched. So I took the cameras over. And had a couple of other people over there, extremely active. Um, okay. I've done a little bit, but only outdoors. Yes, yeah, yes. There's plenty of locations. And, and that's one thing that I like, um, um, Gavin, as well, is, is trying to find um, locations. Because there are plenty of locations, aren't there, around the UK that people are not fully aware of, isn't there? Yeah, yes. All over the place. It's very rarely that I turn up anywhere that I wouldn't say can be active. It's a matter of just trying to get spirits... Uh, use devices or whatever in the paranormal that they can communicate with. It's like a learning curve for them as well. Well, well I want to start with you, um, with you, Gavin. I know that, that we met at, we met at Grendon Hall. Um, it was, was one of the first times that I met you. Uh, and obviously that, that investigation was very, very interesting in itself because obviously the place now, it, it's no longer available for the public to enter now, is it? No, I only looked it up actually last night. Um, a sale had fallen through with Grendon Hall and it's back under offer at present. I can't see it turning into a residential home. So fingers crossed it will turn back up as a residential, sorry, as a um, event. That's exactly. one of my favourite locations. Because it was a huge place, wasn't it? I mean, I was absolutely amazed by, obviously, uh, as you go into Grendon Hall, it's, this, is, this is in Northamptonshire, as you go in there, uh, the, the wooden panelling, for me, uh, especially in the paranormal world, is a very good conductor for that sort of thing, isn't it? That is an extremely active, active place. Um, I've been there twice, but some of the most strongest experiences. Um, that with my son on a chair, we've had the chair flying around, and he was 13, 12, 13, stone, sat on a chair, and we've just got fingertips on it. Four of us wow. with the chair flying around the room. Um, yeah. I've not seen that or repeated that anywhere else other than Grendon. Yeah, Gavin. What, what I want to uh, obviously ask you first, and I do this with all my guests uh, when they come on and join me. Um, I'd like to ask: When did you first realise that you had a obviously a, a, a gift um, to obviously that sort of gift to communicate with with spirit? I developed a lot later in life, but as a child, um, I guess probably my, my mother and my father they were separated. Both lived in houses where spirits were, so. I knew at a young age, especially in cellars going down there, and that was where I'd sort of first, I wanted to go down there at night time, especially at my father's um, house in the cellar. So if there was wine or anything needed extra, I was asked to go down. Which really? Yeah. It was uncomfortable, but it was like, that was where I got rid of most of my fear. Um, so I knew from then, but I only really started developing um, just under three years ago, but developed very, very fast. Um, I think it was only the third or fourth event that I'd actually gone on when I met you. Um, and since then, I now work in the paranormal and do clearances, uh, work as a media, psychic medium. It's my full-time work now. I've given up everything else. So it was kind of meant to be. But yeah, I knew from a child, but just didn't develop till later in life. Yeah. I mean, was there... Was there a obviously a connection? Obviously, was there family members that might have had like psychic abilities uh, in the past before you actually started to to realise that you had it? Yes. Um, well, on my mum's side, only from doing a Ouija board, which was terrified of paranormal. But my father's mother was very sensitive, mainly to do with dreams. So was a couple of the her children. But back on my grandmother's side, yes, there were people in Ireland. Yes. Okay, okay. Another thing about yourself as well, um, um, Gavin, you, you're obviously a psychic medium as well. I mean, obviously, are you into, like, demonology? And do, do you go into trances as well? Because I find that very, um, very interesting as well. Trances I don't do fully. I've, I think I've got the ability to be able to do trance. Closely stuff, well, I guess I have. I have put more, of, more on a paranormal front than on a reading front. 
and more with general spirits than not like guides. But yes, I've got qualification in demonology. Uh, I've got a few qualifications, quite a few qualifications, but demonology is one of them. And I do perform appearances and yeah, the point. Yeah, obviously with 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 clearances, I mean, you obviously do private ones, uh, Gavin. Um, what sort of like do you get? Obviously, the feelings as, uh, as soon as you enter the house or the building, or does it not? It can you, often be beforehand. Often beforehand on the on the actual initial contact um, would be where I start to pick things up. So I've normally got an idea before I arrive somewhere what kind of thing I'm going to be encountering or what's likely to be there. So typically, right. if someone called me and said they've got a problem and it's haunting, if it, if it wasn't, I'm pretty much told beforehand, no, it's not, you can't have around you, um, for instance. But you know, typically, I'm told what's around there before I turn up. Um, yeah. Most I mean, of I mean, does it get to a, to an actual point? I mean, I've asked other guests as well that, that, are, that are mediums that have joined me on my show. Um, what are the feelings? Do they, do they tend to affect you in, in, in a sort of way? Or, or can you actually say that you actually put a wall or a barrier between you beforehand? Well, I've got no fear, OK, which is the they can only really get to you with fear. And I've got an awful lot of intent. So your intention goes a long way. Typically now, if I turn up anywhere to do a clearance, nine times out of ten, if anyone else would turn up, the negative energy will approach them very fast and try and show that they're there and push them back. Typically, if I arrive somewhere, I've then got to find the demon, so to speak, um, because they'll normally hide from me because they know what I do do. And they know that I'll, the negative energy pretty much will keep their distance from me, or they'll come close once and then even on spirit box because I can have communication mentally stop even on spirit box they'll turn around um normally excuse the language here but often on the spirit box i'll get oh shit bishop yeah. the spirit world have nicknamed me bishop because historically bishop did clearances um so when i do things like that that's what normally comes through on a spirit box um yeah yeah no I mean, i've got obviously. no fear now and typically it's me having to find and locate the spirit rather than when i first do it, started doing clearances and they'd be right up in my face that doesn't happen anymore. They normally keep a distance. Keep a distance from you. Yes. Yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, these 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 obviously people that ask you to come and do the house clearances uh, for you, uh, Gavin. Um, is there a point where you, you you know can it get quite emotional as well? I, I, I can imagine that it can do because these people have been obviously experiencing what they've been experiencing within their home or within their place where they are, where they where they you know it must get to them and, and 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 again you've got to try and reassure them obviously that when you come in that everything's going to be i mean how does that all go about typically because i'm not a normal typical medium i've got a lot of equipment to also work paranormal so on clearances i will take the equipment along so for instance a spirit box so they can hear with their own ears because i've got guides that will aid me once we've finished their clearance half the time it's then convincing them that clearance has happened but then when a spirit box is going they've heard it all the way through the night um what you're doing and all of a sudden it goes dead quiet and peaceful and you say is it, is it all done um because i work with one called anna when i'm doing clearances and is it all done and the spirit box comes yes all clear um and you've already felt the energy change and that's just like the reassurance for them and with sls and things like that they can see things and then all of a sudden everything's gone and it's just gone quiet um so then they've got the proof themselves as well as you me just telling them it's all gone because Half the time they think they've gone mad in the first place or they're crazy and don't really know whether they've actually got a problem or not. So to prove to them and show them some physical evidence that we have had a problem, this is what's here, this is what we're dealing with. There's three or there's two or there's one. Um, and then they're normally reassured. It's just yeah. telling them that not all activity will stop. It's, it's the hardest thing to explain because they've got loved ones around. So once they've yeah. seen things happen, they will get touched and things still. And bad will come up close and comfort them. So there's a fine line between what's acceptable paranormal or and like from family or what's not meant to be there and causing a problem. But often I'll pick up on the phone, oh, look, it is just family that are around you. This is happening, this is happening, this is happening. There's nothing else happening, just your TV's turning off by itself, your radio's playing on its own and you're getting touched with an arm around you, but only when you're feeling sad, it's your dad. And then they're reassured. Um, yeah. 
I have actually done a few clearances in lockdown where I haven't actually needed to even go to the venue. I've done it all remotely. Wow, wow. Gavin, um, what's one of the most weirdest experiences that, 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 that you have personally experienced when you've been doing house clearances? Clearance-wise, um, a lady local to me had problems, but she wouldn't listen to the initial advice, which I'd said, he's going to keep coming back because she kept communicating with it, which was then an invite, an invite back. So she wasn't really listening. Um, they kept coming back, and every time it came back, it was stronger. Right. Um, final time where she did listen, I got to the house and she'd already rang me. Her voice was changing between a male and hers. So there was she was possessed. Um, when I got there, wouldn't come down to her. He wouldn't come down to unlock the door because he was using her body. When she finally did, she didn't tread on the steps. She levitated the whole way down the flight of steps. It was wow. like she was skiing, but controlled and slow. Yeah. Just wow. floated down the steps. The legs did not move. And that was probably one of the times that I don't have any fear, but I did think, oh. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> exactly, yeah. We were in the car and took it to a church, which was just, my head went, I've got to do something near religious because I don't really use religion in clearances but I like I need to do something here to push it back out and so I had a conversation with a man that sat next to me the whole time on the way to the church that was telling me that he hated me um oh the church work but that's the weirdest thing I've seen yeah oh wow wow yeah I mean obviously going to um obviously the religious side of the paranormal I mean obviously it's out there isn't it I mean people um obviously like demons, you know, let, let's go down the road of obviously demons and that. I mean, what's your take on demons, Gavin? Demons are like people. Um, there's good and there's bad. It's a name that we've given to energies that haven't lived on this earth. So poltergeist could be a spirit or is a spirit that's lived on the earth, playful and naughty or maybe a negative energy. Demons are something different. They've never lived on the earth. There are good and bad. Some some can be very helpful. They don't mean to cause a problem, and they're here. Others want to cause a problem. Maybe want to. My belief from what I've been told, my beliefs are my own. It's not necessarily everyone's. But some cases with demons, some of them want to rip apart a person mentally as much as they can and almost push them towards suicide. Which I believe, if they do that, there's a chance they can claim the soul and come and live on the earth. Which is why they do what they do. Yeah, because it it can get to those extreme measures, though, can't it? Uh, with people, uh, if they get into that kind of uh, that mindset, isn't it? Uh, that they, it that they, they they truly believe that these things are happening. You've seen it as well on, on your side. And you're thinking, wow, you know, it, this must be quite hard to deal with on day to day life. Yeah, but most spirit problems with clearances, seventy percent of them, if not eighty percent of them, are down to spirits that have lived. It's very small percentage with demons that we'd call. Um, and normally it'd be they're normally older properties and it's an old owner of the house that still thinks they own the house want to take care of it and you're in the middle of doing development work so they might have lived there 10 years they've knocked the part of the wall down and that spirit's all of a sudden not happy because you're not taking care of the house so mm. that's typically the kind of things yeah. that you're more often called for um or mirrors the biggest problem people picking up second-hand mirrors and things like that but mirrors, it's funny you should say that, um, uh, Gavin, because uh, I've had a lot of experiences, especially on, on different paranormal investigations, that I've caught things on mirrors. Um, there was one in uh, Cardiff Mansion in Wales. Uh, I was in one of the bedrooms there, uh, and there was this table. You, you might have seen it, or my, guests, uh, my members might have seen it as well. But a lot of people are not spotting it, Ga uh, Gavin. A, a lot of people are not spotting it. I can spot. I spotted it straight away as soon as I actually filmed it because I was there at the time when it happened. But when you look back on it, it's very, very faint. But it's it's kind of like a like a small dot or a shadow going across the mirror when I asked. Now this is I asked obviously the spirit that was within the room to actually do that at that time. And amazingly, it happened. You know, and I was trying to debunk it in all things like because we were uh, we were like about the third floor up because this has got four floors. Uh, the mansion has. So it couldn't have been car lights uh, uh, of any sort because that's probably probably what I was thinking it was at the time. But it's a kind of feeling when you're there, when it's happening. Um, I've, I've got goosebumps, you know, everywhere on my arms and my neck, my hairs and my neck went up and stuff like that. And I knew <laughs> that it was a spirit trying to make contact with me. That's the, that's, because you're sensitive to it. They know you are. So if, 
anyone that is slightly sensitive and what you do going into paranormal um if you imagine like lighthouses anyone that's slightly sensitive it lights up a light for spirit so they will come around you and they know there's more chance of communicating to you than the skeptic that's come along to disprove that spirits exist and whenever it comes to an event a spirit going to go and communicate to him or they're going to go to someone that's got a light above the head that says they believe or can experience things so that's the way spirit you'll get more interaction that way if you're sensitive to them than like a complete skeptic or a non-believer because they've just got no light above their head for spirits to come and communicate of course the more you develop the more the light is bright so can attract more and more yeah yeah I, I know another uh, thing as well, obviously going back earlier to, uh, to the conversation that we were having, Gavin, was um, the fact that obviously knowing places that, that are very unknown, people that are not aware that these places are haunted or that there is any spiritual uh, connectivity to them. But I found out, uh, especially in a place near Worcester, where I used to go when I was very, when I was, when I was in, my, in my teens, we used, to, we used to go across the field. And stuff. We went to a level crossing, apparently, uh, a train level crossing where a lot of suicides took place there. And we've like had many, well, I had many experiences there of seeing uh, crazy lights, seeing apparitions at this spot. I mean, you, you try to imagine that obviously when they did commit suicide, the trauma that must've been involved at that, when that actually happened, that, that can trigger the energies, can't it? I would have thought. Yes. And where you're, you might experience that that a lot of people wouldn't, could be they're calling for help because if you're lit up slightly and they're stuck a lot of cases with suicide they could be still stuck earthbound so then the energies will remain um, especially if they're extremely sad they're still in that motion they haven't got the love that's uh that's necessarily needed in order to pass on um so then you've, you've got to kind of give them the love to pass on but that is uh, level crossings and road accidents and things like that are uh, where you'd you'd sense them or see them yeah um yeah I mean, it was like at, um, at Grandon Hall as well. I think there was one area in, in, in the upper in the upper floors in the bedroom where we went to that room. And I think somebody committed suicide in there. But as soon as everyone went into that room, everyone picked up on the energies that there was something wrong with it, wasn't that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, everyone everyone did. Um, other than maybe a couple of them that were sceptical. But yes, that was lungs. In fact, you were out of breath as soon as you got up that last flight of stairs. It was like you were choked. It was like out of breath. And then you could move further yeah. up the corridor. It wasn't like that. Um, another place that springs to mind that was like that is Peterborough Museum. I don't know if you've been. It used to be a hospital. And it was tuberculosis. Oh, and no. you go up, up the stairs there, 90% of people, as soon as they go up there, and then as soon as they get up there, because they're picking up the energies of the people that would have died in the hospital. Um, yeah. That's right, yeah. Because, I mean, is, is that another thing that happens to you as well, Gavin? Um, when you go, obviously, do you get the feelings of the actual spirit of, of whatever might have been wrong with them before they passed over? Yes, especially in readings. They'll give me that and evidence will show me how they passed. Um, so, yes, and then it's just asking them to take it away. I don't find it uncomfortable or anything anymore, but I can see how someone that wasn't used to it could. Because spirit will always listen when you ask them to take it back. Um, again, it's your intent stronger than theirs. Even if it's a negative spirit, take it away. Um, then they've kind of got to. Yeah, because it must be quite hard as well. Um, obviously, when you're doing your mediumship uh, and, and you come across someone and you're getting, obviously, your relatives coming through, um, does it does it get quite emotional, uh, Gavin? Obviously, seeing the person that you're relaying back to information uh, on the person that's passed away, does that have an effect on you or you'll be able to just to, to, to like... I guess if you're, talking, if you're talking about readings, um, I guess not because I have to get into a quiet mind state, which is where my mind's completely clear anyway. So literally at the point I'm doing, sometimes it's too fast. Whatever comes, I've just repeated before it's, I've even vetted it, which sometimes be a bit of a shock when it's come out a bit quick, but they can normally, they, they'll always take it. Um, so no, because by the end of a reading, even if uh, whoever I was reading for had got a weight over their shoulders to do with father dying or mother dying and they didn't say goodbye or whoever it was, Spirit will comfort them and tell them, look, it's all right, and this has happened or that's happened, and give them the proofs and tell them they're loved, and it'll normally get rid of that pain from over their shoulders. So then they've sort of moved on. So in that way, at the end of a reading, it's like, actually, that was really good, and they needed that. So I'd more pick up on the positive emotion at the end of the reading, not what I'm picking up at the start of the reading. Um, 
to do with the person I'm reading for. I can pick up, though, the energies of the spirit that may be sad or have got a problem of this, that, or the other that's emotional when they approach me. I can pick up that energy far easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things, Gavin, is um, I've obviously uh, put the message out to obviously my my followers uh, on, the, on the actual group page, obviously to obviously know that you that you were coming on. Uh, I've had some uh, questions uh, okay. that have been related to, me, and I'm going to relay them to you. Uh, Dave Green asks uh, if you could do an investigation uh, anywhere in the world, uh, where would it be and why? Anywhere in the world. Alcatraz. Yeah. Alcatraz. Definitely, yeah. But I think I could spend a week there. I'd love to give it more than just one bit of time in this place and that and actually a good quality amount of time. Then I think you'd actually have an awful lot going on. You know, yeah. If I ever see on YouTube Alcatraz, there's a paranormal or anything on that, then I'm very, very interested. Um, yeah, because I'd be high on the list. Obviously, it's a prison, isn't it? And we all know about prisons. I mean, I've been to quite a few uh, in the UK. I've been to Shrewsbury Prison, uh, Gloucester Prison. Uh, I've been to these places. And they're, they're the ones that are quite hard as well, especially for me, because um, you do pick up on the energies. You go into a lot of, you know, the cells and that, and you do pick up a lot of the energies. Uh, even the waiting the rooms coming through, the energy that just even the living had left behind where they were going to see their loved ones. And like... So, like the, the visiting areas, that's one of the heaviest energies in the prisons or to death row. I've been to Shepton Mallet, because so I'm basing what I'm saying on that here. But the, because they were hung still at that prison, there's a lot of energy around there where families would know they weren't going to see them again. Or when they walked through those doors, they knew what their sentence was and that they were going to be dying there. So, the energies in those type of prisons are much different to the modern prisons where there's no death penalty. Yeah, because in strong, strong energies. Yeah, because you obviously think, yeah, the prisons, I mean, uh, their crimes, whether they be horrific or whether they be like minor crimes, it must have been, uh, it must have been awful at the time, you know, to be just staring at those four walls, you know, and not being able to uh, to do anything. And it, and, it, and, it, and it kind of, to them, it kind of, it's going to send them insane, isn't it, Gavin, you know? Yeah, uh, especially with those ones where they, they wouldn't be punished for those crimes today. So maybe taking a loaf of bread or something like that because they were absolutely starving and they've died in that prison and they were only young. And that's very emotional to pick up the energies of that in the prisons um, with these older prisons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, another question. Um, Amy White asks, uh, what is the first thing you'd pack when you're heading out to an investigation? Myself. Yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because... Uh, um, so there's two ways for that. Obviously, I couldn't do it without myself. But if it's, she's talking about instruments-wise, I trust my own sensitivity before any other equipment. So it'd have to be myself because um, I can feel, I can see, I can touch, I can communicate. So I, that would be, I wouldn't care if I didn't have anything else as long as I'd still got those skills. But second, so... I, on top of that, the only other bit that I would not want to forget would be a camera. Because I can pick up no end of evidence just with a camera and a flash. Um, that yeah, was a tough choice between the camera or a spirit box. Yeah. But it's like you say, though, I mean, I've always, since I've been in the, you know, in the paranormal world, the best tool, as, you, as you've mentioned, is yourself, isn't it? Or with all your senses and stuff, sometimes you don't need all that major equipment that a lot of these uh, paranormal groups go out and take, isn't it? Yeah, I prefer the equipment, so when I've gone to the spirit over there, I can turn the SLS around and show them that what I've just seen is actually there. Or turn the spirit box on and say, they've just told me, and then they repeat it on the spirit box, which is fascinating for people to hear. It's not just taking the word of what I'm saying. It's spirit always back it up, then with a, an electronic device. Um, but yeah, spirit boxes are wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've got, uh, especially with um, digital uh, voice recorders as well, uh, I, I get quite a lot off that as well, you know, which is, which is... Do nowadays, now I listen to the sound back off of videos that I've taken. I've never done that until recently. And then okay. there's quite a few EVPs that I've captured that I was completely unaware of, I thought. Um, yeah, no, that's... They're brilliant what spirit can do. They can do more and more... So my beliefs are always changing. The amount that they can do 
there's always one that can throw something else into the mix of what they can do, um, and they can learn. I just don't understand how certain items work, but they, they do work. Um, like I was using a visual, um, I don't know whether you use the app, Deadwave. I've got a visual class on there that's just like an analog video loop. I use that online with viewers, and viewers' loved ones were coming through on the images I was showing to the viewers online. Um, so what spirit can do is amazing. Like I've used in lockdown, the spirit box to bring loved ones, controlled it enough to keep the energy so they're not all rushing it. Having loved ones speak to their daughters or their sons through the spirit box rather than it just from me so they can hear their voice. Um, yeah. I didn't know whether it would be possible, but it's always worth giving things a go. Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. Of course it is. Gavin, I want to uh, obviously ask you as well about, um, and this is one of my main important things that, that I like to ask my guests who come on to my show, is that um, do you believe in like spiritual haunted objects? Are you a believer in that? Yes. One hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, obviously, objects obviously come like dolls, um, obviously people's uh, personal items like jewellery and stuff like that. Do you pick up on stuff like that for people when you do your readings? Jewellery doesn't necessarily mean there's an attachment of a spirit. Jewellery could be because it's normally something that's been worn for a prolonged period of time, so there are energies on it. So it'd be more my psychic abilities that pick up the energies from that jewellery. It doesn't mean that there isn't, there couldn't be something attached to jewellery, but I'd said that was a bit different to spirit doll or a teddy or things like that but again different religion normally if it's a doll or something like that it is, it is a spirit that has lived on this earth okay um but then of course you've got boxes and things from other religions the divot boxes and the jinns and things like that which are very now, much different you've just said that special word is it yeah box? now I still have one in my possession, Gavin. Um, and I know you inquired about it for me to send it to you. Is it near you? It's, it's, it's not. It's not. And it, the weirdest thing about it is I won't go anywhere near it. Because I was going to say, before we finished, at the end, if it was near you, just hold it up and I'll tell you what I've picked up from it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we have put it away somewhere out in the shed, but I can't find it. It's not in there. I don't feel it's negative. So it's it's crazy, you know. I even went in there yesterday, you know, to, to have a quick look. We could not, I could not see it anywhere, and we did put it in there. So I'm going to hunt again because it must be in there. It can't be anywhere else. But obviously, going to the debug boxes. I mean, I personally don't like going anywhere near it. I just get this feeling from it, even though it's not been opened. It's got candle wax. It's got a Pentagon five star on it. It's just, I, yeah, it just scares me. I mean, have you experienced these things? Um, yes, the biggest place where I've come across those energies, um, which again, some are good and some are bad, which is where I picked that up from, would have been the Polskeist house in Rotherham. Um, there they've got a room that's purely divot boxes, etc. cetera. Um, they'd opened them in there as well. So the spirits that were in there, they were very, very strong. But they weren't all bad. Some were, like on our side, more trying to be protective, which were the gins. But there were others that were negative. But they're, they'll often go for the weakest people rather than the strongest. Try and do what they do. Um, but they're very strong, very much a different energy to a human spirit. Some would have been brought around as like more good luck charms and been closed into been good luck but others would have been to actually used for cursing people it depends what the intent was when they were because a lot of the times they've been tricked you know that energy's been tricked into getting into that box in the first place so okay and it's kind of the items as well that are within the boxes as well aren't there because you can get a varied range of uh, of items it can be literally anything on it i've not seen many the insides of many boxes i've come in contact with quite a few um the haunted museum nottingham i've up close to their divot box, which is a very, very negative one. They've got it chained in a locked room, in a cabinet, so really keep it in. That energy would need to be kept away. That could harm people, um, especially with fires, from what I remember picking up from it. Uh, so, completely different energy. Yeah, because there, there was an incident, uh, I think, 
I mean, this is, I mean, I'm going back months and months ago, and I don't know whether anyone heard the story about, about this woman who did uh, open one of these boxes and the things that were happening within her house was absolutely strange. You know, things were going missing. Lights were turning on and off. She was hearing footsteps around the house. Uh, there was actually, um, like, fire was starting in her house, like on her sofas, her carpets and her curtains and stuff like that, which, again, you know, absolutely, I, I think to myself, that's quite terrifying, isn't it? I, I would, it always steps up. It starts off something small and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's only just come into my mind now, but some of those times, do you think it's because they're after attention to know that they're there in order to be helped back to wherever they've come from if they were tricked into that item in the first place? So the, it, the only thing that they know is negative or we're perceiving it as negative, which really they just wanted to be known. Um, if you were locked away for years and years, I imagine we'd all, any of us would all be pretty negative when we let back out. Um, exactly. You wouldn't be happy, would you? Especially if you're not wanting to be here, which most of those haven't, aren't you? Well, they're not human spirit. So they want to just be returned to wherever they're meant to have come from. Um, yeah. I mean, the other question as well, uh, Gavin, is that obviously these boxes have been designed, they, they've obviously been done, but, but what sort of people are doing these sort of things and, and, and putting these boxes out there? Are they people to do with, obviously, spiritualism, uh, the, the, the uh, demonologists or uh, witches and stuff like that? Are they the ones that, that are... Uh, 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 that are doing these things because the one that I got uh, was obviously from a lady who obviously dipped out in witchcraft. Black magic, I'd say. The majority of black magic. They're worse energies if they're typically they're worse energies if they've come from abroad. Um, not necessarily voodoo, but around that sort of religion. That's that's where most most of it's from black magic. If they're not there. It's not Earth, and then yes, it's got to be witchcraft and summoned him from somewhere. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 really it's it's mind it's mind blowing, really. Because um, it's very much different from bowls or something like that. Where, in my beliefs, they've had a choice of whether they wanted to be attached to that item. In some cases, they've attached themselves to that item because they don't want to cross over for whatever reason, or they want to stay on Earth helping, um, but or they don't want to go up and be judged, so they attach themselves to an item. Um, or because they desperately miss someone. That's very much different to where they've been tricked into an item. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Gavin, uh, I think I've got... Uh, can I ask very quickly, because I can't get this out of my head, Mark. I'm, right, going with Gary. I'm seeing a storage area. Seeing my... In your house, have you got somewhere that you throw, like, junk in the house? I'm Under stairs throwing... cupboard or something that backs onto a garage or something? We have something covered. Like a cupboard or something that you put the junk or, yeah, or something covered or where you put all the junk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. How did you do that? Because wow. I'm being told that box has got itself back into your house. Really? What you're saying, it's in that area now as we speak? That area, but it's as if it's hidden behind something. So it's not in the cupboard, it's like behind something. But to do with where you put that right. junk. Okay. Okay. I couldn't get it out of my head. Right. I to tell you. Wow. Wow, that, that's quite that's quite special because I don't think I've ever had a guest on that that said something like that. But yeah, I, I can have a look at it a bit later and I'll, I'll let you know if it is if it is behind there and I do find it. Uh, I feel like no, quite... you're scared. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> Give me one sec. Wait, it's another question for you, Gavin. Yeah. Jamie Winner says, um, "What advice would you give someone uh, heading out an investigation for the first time?" Energy. Make sure that you enjoy yourselves. Have fun. The more fun that you're having, the more energy that you're using, the more interaction that you're trying. Give spirit the energy to see or experience something paranormal. If you're sat there like that, quiet as anything, you're not really going to get anything to happen. I know you have to be quiet in order to hear the taps or the bangs, but when you initially arrive, communicate with the spirit. Be noisy. Have some fun. Even singing and things like that can raise the energy of a room, which is Gaining the spirit's energy to interact. Um, the more energy that you give, the more you give into a investigation, the more you'll get out of it. So there's no point arriving and just sat there like, yeah. not believing. If, mean, there's a skeptic, if there's a skeptic near you, get as far away from as possible, you're more likely to experience more. They can bring exactly. the energy of a whole group down. 
Exactly, because I, I, there are many ones that I've been on, and I think that, like like you're saying, it is crucial uh, for people to, if they want to go on these investigations, you know, at least go with an open mind. Um, at least open your mind to it, you know, instead of, because, you know, there are times where I've gone to investigations. Uh, I'll take one, for example, like the ancient ram in, uh, um, obviously, I've been there. I've done two investigations there. It's one of the most haunted places in the UK. But every time when I've been Gavin, it's been absolutely quiet. There, 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 there's been no activity whatsoever there. Other than the cupboard. It sounds absolutely crazy. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, I've been there twice, and every time when I've been, it's been absolutely quiet. There's there, there's not a lot that's that's happened. But there again, I, I mean, been out of the house. I've just been picking up about the cupboard or something on the downstairs. I've not been there. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's really weird. I and mean, then. But I knew that it wasn't going to be very good because obviously there were a few people there that, that were obviously skeptics at the time. And having them sort of energies there that have that are not really taking part in it, it does have an effect on it, doesn't it? It does. We've had tables flying around with table tipping with guests. Um, none of us are touching it, but the table's moving. And the skeptic, oh, let me have a go. Oh, I mean, it all stops. And I don't know whether that's because then they're putting so much pressure on it because you obviously just have to have a gentle that it all stops, or they're like, I'm not performing for them. If they don't believe, they can sod off kind of attitude from spirit. Or the opposite yeah. happens, and it goes absolutely crazy, and the table will squash them into a corner. So it's either one or the other. You'll get absolutely nothing, or it'll go and physically try and do something to the sceptic. Yeah, obviously table tipping, I, I find it's, it's, it's a very fascinating thing, because uh, on the table tipping that I've done, personally, myself, uh, well, it's the same for you as well, it's an easy way to obviously communicate with spirit, isn't it? I mean, a lot of people have said to me when I've been doing it as well, that, that, that you're applying pressure with your fingers and you're subconsciously not noticing that you're doing it. But I have seen, I know that, that obviously about five or six people around, I've seen that they are generally not pushing. They're not putting any, you know, they're not pushing this chair. This chair is literally moving on its own. Uh, I think, where was it? Um, it was a place in Wales where I went to. Um, oh, it's one, one of the castles there, and we were obviously doing it, you know, uh, a table tip at that certain you know time, and we, we all had our fingers on it, but the, the table was moving. It was literally at one point it was levitating off the floor, uh, and I was looking down. You, think, you can't do that with your fingertip. Like I said, Grendon, we had my son on the twelve stone, sat on a chair, so four of us with a fingertip. You try and push a twelve stone person, four of you even with your fingertip. It's not going to happen. So there's no other way than there's some other energy controlling it. Yeah. Grendon, again, if you recall Grendon, the bunk, the bunk beds they were metal, solid steel things that were extremely heavy. But we, yes, we went to start moving one of those um, with our fingertips. And again, there were only three or four of us. And we then realised it was a crazy idea. This table was washing people into the corner. And we thought... This bed so it's so heavy. If it does move, it could kill one of us. If it does fly, because it started to move, but there was no way that we could. I couldn't have even move it myself, trying to drag it or push it. It weighed an absolute ton. Um, but spirit had to get involved to move that. It's again, you know, these people that get superhuman powers, like a mother that's there's a child squashed under a car, and she can physically get hold of that car and she lifts it up to release the child. That's kind of the same, in my opinion, as table tipping. The energy is coming from spirit in order to make that happen. So you may have even that pressure on, but it's not enough to be able to do what you're seeing. Yeah, but people don't realise that they have. I mean, like you said about, obviously, if, if, if someone that you love got trapped under a car or whatever, you find that sort of energy at, at that moment. In, in that moment, you think, where's it coming from? But it does, doesn't it? Because your adrenaline is, is running so much, uh, you don't realise that you do it to obviously get somebody out. Yeah, no, that's true. I'd love to take a picture of someone doing that, though, just to see whether there's a row of spirits behind them as well, giving a lift. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I know. when we did the investigation at Grandin as well, um, Gavin, is um, I think it was one of the investigators' mom, wasn't it? I think we, we obviously did what they call... Um, yes. Uh, human tipping, like, wasn't it? Or, human pendulum, uh, yeah. A human pendulum, yes, yeah. And, and it got quite out of hand, didn't it, if you remember? Yes, yeah, she had to be carried out. That was kind of a, it was kind of a possession, basically. Um, I know it did zap her energy. I haven't seen that happen again, really. Um, it's not normal for that to happen with human pendulum. 
the only time that well, what I can't kind of pick up is if you stay with the human pendulum and you're you're giving the answers of spirit, and someone asks a question and you move in the direction you want to, isn't necessarily the answer of the spirit, then spirit could get annoyed. I think that's more if you're leading the answers that aren't necessarily correct, then there is a problem with spirit getting their own back. So I don't think it was someone wanting to leave with them. That wasn't the intention. Um, but yeah, they, that wasn't nice at all. That wasn't a nice experience. Uh, Gavin, I'd like to ask you just, just then, I heard, you haven't got a TV or a radio or anything playing in the background, have you? You may have just heard a dog. Ah, right, that's probably what I was. Yeah, yeah, a little dog just yapped. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> You're not the only one. I've got a dog here as well, which is being really cool. <laughs> Uh, but um, but yeah, obviously going back to that situation and uh, Gavin, obviously uh, when she was uh, taken over by his spirit, it gets it gets to a stage where it gets quite frightening, doesn't it? Because she was really in a bad way, wasn't she? I mean, her breathing and everything was was getting quite to the stage where you had to really step in, didn't you? I didn't do too much too much there because I couldn't get close because the mother, the daughter was there as well. So they pretty much did. The majority would be cross. I know I told or demanded the spirit step back, which it kind of did. And the moment that it did step back, she had absolutely no recollection of what had happened or why she was outside. So that was a prime example of spirit taking over the body, um, kind of in its entirety. She did not have a clue how she got outside, what she was doing, and just energy had gone. Um, But that Grendon, that Grendon is, uh, is a different place. That, the energy in Grendon is completely different. I've had some of my best captures on photos from there. And some of the experiences there are completely different. I first, that was one of the first places um, that I realised my intent to, to control energies, spirit energies, yeah. kind of developed from Grendon. I was one of the investigations. I was a little bit rude to one of the spirits there and I got dragged around a room. After that, I thought, well, if they can touch me, I can touch them. So... Then that like if they can touch me, I can hold their energy. So my intent was stronger than theirs was, but I did go back and apologise by my met you there. And um, yeah. I think it taught me a big lesson to do with clearances and it was kind of for a purpose to know that I could control energies. Their energies there are it's just different. It's a different type of energy. Um I think there was quite a few crimes committed there, especially with the stairs and the lady falling over. But definitely that the male energy in that house he was evil. So he still is. He doesn't Delicious. mind being spotted or anything else. He just, it's probably one of the only locations I've been to where there's a very much big presence of positive spirits as well as a negative spirit. You normally either go to somewhere that's really negative or really positive, and that really is a mixture of both. Yes, yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. Um, Gavin, do you like, obviously, uh, another question is, uh, I haven't asked you yet, obviously when you go out and when you do the house clearances, uh, when you do mediumship work at um, some of the haunted places that, that, that you go to, is there a time where you just switch off as soon as you get back home or do you get the spirits, do they follow you back? What happens there? No, I've never had spirit follow me back because when I've cleared them, they've gone back to wherever they originated. So even if it's a demon that's not lived on the air, because that go into another conversation on how, but there's somewhere else they can go, so they go back. Um, likewise, if it's a human spirit, then typically it'd be the light, or, or typically the light, they can be taken forcefully with my love, opposed to even if they've got no love and they don't re regret, got no remorse, you can still get them up with your own, with your own love when you know how, dealing with it. Archangel Michael would be the biggest one that I deal with. So no, I've not had that experience of following back. Um, the only time that I've had that happen was from a private investigation pub, um, which it did come back. I dealt with it once it was home, uh, once we were home. That was a completely different energy. He wasn't happy because I'd stripped him away from who he was hidden in their aura. So he chose to do that. But no, I haven't had any problem with anything following back other than that. Um, I do often get, if I'm driving around, spirits that will jump into the car. They won't distract me. But when I get home, I'm told the spirits need the light. So I do end up with spirits coming back with me, but they're ones with good intent. So no, I've not had from a location any um, that follow back. Typically now as well, if we leave anywhere, um, I'll just imagine and pour the light over myself and I know that nothing negative can come near me. Typically, most negative energies won't even want to come near me. 
they'll keep as far distance as possible because they might not want to move on or go back to wherever they're meant to be. They're terrified of that. So they've got more fear of me than I have of them, um, which is a bit different to most. So I know if on a, had a couple of instances on him, like paranormal events where someone may have had a bit of a problem, but if I tell them to step back and it's like, they'll do it out of choice rather than being forced, forcefully removed from being by someone. Um, but no, I really don't fear. Cause I don't even no. believe anything would try and follow me back anymore. I just couldn't comprehend that particularly happening. Um, they just keep as far away from me as possible. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I know um, earlier on in the year, we had some sad news, didn't we, Gavin? Um, we probably lost one of the bestest mediums that I think that I've ever seen work. Obviously, the Derek Okora, you know, um, such a shock, wasn't it, to everyone, wasn't it, at the time, to hear about his passing? Yeah, he was he, he was a good medium. Um, I'm sure he'll be remembered for his, well, for most haunted. The most memorable thing with me with him was that Dick loves Mary and Mary loves Dick. Dick yeah, loves exactly. Mary. Mary loves yeah. Dick. And he just kept repeating it because everyone was laughing because he was trying to get the message through, which I can understand. It was like, because he wouldn't have been on our plane like here. He'd have been taking the message because everyone's laughing. He doesn't think everyone understood it. So four or five times he was, and then just realised what he'd said. Yeah. Things like that can happen with spirit. But that was very, very funny. Yeah, it was, it was funny, you know, he, he will be missed because I, I genuinely spoke to the guy, you know, he came onto my show briefly, but the, the, yeah, the time when it didn't work and I was absolutely gutted that I, that I didn't have the chance to actually speak to him one-on-one -on -one like, like we have been doing, but but he was inspirational, wasn't he? Like to obviously start to, to, to get the ball rolling with obviously paranormal investigations at that time, wasn't he? Yeah, he's, um, I know he's got a lot of haters as well as lovers. Um, his heart was in the right place. What he did as a medium was fantastic. Um, if that's even discrediting paranormal, or maybe he did have to do things or paid to do things differently with the TV. But what he did with communication for loved ones just on a private scale and readings was amazing. He, he, he was lovable. Um, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, and he, he, will be, he will be very, very sadly missed. He um, will be. Well, I want to ask uh, again, Gavin. This, this is great. Thoroughly enjoying it. I hope everyone's enjoying it who's watching it at home as well. Please, uh, obviously, my guests who, who are watching uh, this great interview tonight with, with, with Gavin, uh, if you've got any questions, please uh, fire away. Um, because, obviously, the comments, uh, which I see on the right-hand side of the screen at this moment, so if you've got a question to ask, Gavin, uh, please uh, fire away at any point. But I want to go back to uh, earlier on in, uh, in the interview, uh, Gavin, that... Um, you were saying about uh, haunted woods, weren't you? I mean, um, yeah. a lot of people, I mean, especially myself, I've been to a few uh, haunted uh, wooded areas. Now, I get different feelings as well when I go to, obviously, the places, the woods. Like, like you, you know, you've got your historical buildings, you've got your mansions, you've got your castles and stuff. But, but with woodlands, it seems a different kind of haunting, doesn't it? Because I've had a few experiences, especially... Uh, in my younger years, that, that there was some woodland up by, in Worcestershire where I used to live. And I was with a group of friends. We weren't out ghost hunting. We weren't doing any of that sort of thing. Uh, and we just saw this gentleman. Now, we didn't see his face, but we saw, like, a silhouette. And he was just walking away. And we actually said hello to this guy. Uh, a few and he didn't, even, he didn't even answer us. And then after a split second, he was gone. And me and my friends were kind of looking at each other thinking, we have just seen somebody walking through the woods and it's just, he's just totally vanished. It's crazy. And our woods are a different, different energy. But before I come back to that one, what you just said about seeing someone, my experience of seeing someone with my own eyes and not realising, I actually had a conversation with, I was doing nothing paranormal. Um, I didn't even realise that they weren't there and they were in spirit. Um, I was delivering something for someone and I, went past the parcel over the gate. I actually passed the parcel over the gate. Then I went to a local shop and said, when they asked what I was doing there, said I'd been delivering a parcel, uh, delivered it to the blah, blah, blah house. There was a man uh, dealing with his horse um, in the yard. I said, I know what house you're meaning. There hasn't been a man with a horse at that house for many, many years. But lots oh, wow. of people do see the spirit of the horse and the man. So I've just had a full-blown conversation with him. And so I handed a parcel to a man that was a spirit. So 
There was no horse, no man at that property. It wasn't what I described was the man that had lived there 70 years ago. Um, so that seeing something was just, it just reminded me when you'd said about the woods. The woods themselves, um, in my beliefs, everything's got energy. Okay? So trees, in a forest, you've got hundreds of trees. So each of those have got an energy. So technically, if you're talking energies, and you could use we've got energy, spirit have got energy. So technically, those trees have got an energy. So it might not be a human spirit, but it could be nature spirit. So all of a sudden, you've got energies that are magnified. So those nature spirits are among those human spirits, or whatever else is in the forest or wooded area, which can magnify the total energies. But typically, you wouldn't just notice the nature spirit going for a walk, or unless you're sensitive or things like that. But as soon as it gets dark, it's woods can be very much different, even for skeptics. People don't like necessarily the built-up forests in the dark. It can feel creepy. It feels like you're being watched. But are yeah. they from, from snake spirit or human spirit? But it was completely different to the woods that I went to. It was the first time I had been in the woods. It was just the only reason we went. We'd do picnics with the kids and things like that. And wherever we stop, we always go to the same place if we're doing that with the dogs and the picnic. Myself and my partner, we've always felt like we were watched. So I got a new yeah. camera. I thought, no, all, all events are cancelled. I know. I'll go to where we, the woods where we always feel like we've been watched. I just couldn't believe it. Um, yeah. I ended up doing a live from there and everyone could see everything, but it was remarkable. I've been a couple of times since. We've had gunfire and all sorts um, on sounds. Wow, wow, wow. Um, a Facebook user, I don't know why it's not coming across to say who's answering the, the, uh, the question here, uh, Gavin, but... Um, you why. They have to what? give themselves permission now for data protection and let their names come up. Ah, yeah. The, the, uh, basically, they're saying, hey, I'm fascinated by roadside ghosts. How often do you see them, Gavin? And do they tend to be modern day spirits? That's quite a good question, isn't it? Roadside. Um, clearest that I've ever seen. And I even then went back to the car and got my phone to take a picture. It was outside a doctor's surgery. And it was crystal clear. I did find out someone had died within the last 36 hours in that doctor's surgery. Um, that was the clearest. Occasionally at junctions, I will, I normally sense them before I see them. So typically, I might get a little bit of communication, but that, one of my rules is if I'm driving and spirit aren't communicate with me. So my intent again there, it doesn't ever actually happen. They might jump into the car with me, but I'd know more when I got home. Um, and then they'd start communicating. So I don't see as much at the side of the road. When I do do, it would normally be if my partner was in the car as well. I just saw something at the side of the road. Then I might look and I'd see it. But me by myself, they won't necessarily show themselves at the side of the road, knowing that's one of my rules that I'm not distracted while driving. So the only times I have seen is normally when my partner's seen them first. Right, OK. Uh, that was from Lorian, by the way, uh, who, who uh, sent that question. So, OK, yeah. Hi, Lorian. <laughs> but, yeah, but um, obviously going back to, to the, you know, the, the, the wooded areas again it's like you said the trees have that sort of right energy that spirals around them maybe it was what me and my friends saw maybe it was uh uh like a spiritual like seeing this person maybe they went there to end their life um you, you know maybe we were seeing a replay of someone just basically walking through the woods i mean there are times or, or stories that I've heard that that, that, that people say about, obviously, uh, horse and carriages and, and things like that. You know, they actually hear it because I've actually heard it. Uh, horse and carriages on, on a railway bridge. Funny enough, you're talking about the horse and carriage and things. The woods that I went to, it was like a crossroad of paths between villages. I was slap bang in the middle of the crossroads. Um, but also there was a battle that had been there as well. And there was a... I don't know what they called it, flu hospital or sickness hospital 200, 300 metres away. But I didn't know any of that at the time. I picked up little bits. So I researched after I'd left the woods and found out more from the communication that we'd got. Um, but yeah, the energies, you never know. They're, they're all gonna, there's going to be so many energies, you know, many thousands of years that are going to go through those woods. What was there beforehand? Um, what was on the land? There may have been buildings there before and, and all sorts. That's Plus, right. if they're wanting to go somewhere quiet, they're going to go to the woods rather than yeah. uh, in the middle of a city. Um, exactly. Exactly. Uh, going, Gavin, we're going, going back very quickly to the crossroads that Lorian mentioned. 
Yeah. How many how many of us do see it though? And they're that full of an apparition, we not realise it's not it's not a human. So yeah. we could have all seen them and just not even realised, or you even told someone you thought was a human. How many times does that happen? And we just are unaware of. That's right. That's right. Right, questions are coming in quick and fast. Uh, Gavin, yeah. we've got ten minutes. So I believe how quick it's gone. But um, Lorraine Jones asks. Gavin, what is the scariest experience that you've ever had since you've been a medium? <laughs> Coming to hearing an explosion in the house before we went to Grendon, we'd watched some videos on it. The spirit were aware I was going to Grendon and someone else had had a similar experience with that. We'd watched a video, and that's how I ended up meeting Sadie within Deco and went to the event there. Anyway, it was one of her videos that I watched, and we were going to Brendan. Spirit didn't want me to go, and it exploded the glass on the oven in the middle of the night. It turned the oven on, um, all the everything on on the oven. Uh, that was probably that's coming into the category of one of the most scary things because that was at home, and it knew that we were it was the intent of us going there, and just wanted to not go. Um, yeah. Okay. Wow. Wow. No, nothing really frightens. Nothing really frightens me. Um, been to the haunted antique paranormal research centre, and we slept in the. I think it's not the chamber of fear. What the, the, the seance room at the back, which apparently is the most negative room in the, what was the most negative room in the place. I slept slept fine. I did leave my partner closest to the mirror, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but no, we were fine. Um. um Okay, we've got uh, another question from Graham Pikesley. Uh, have you ever been around Nasby in Northamptonshire? That's where I met the horse and the uh, man. So where I was just talking about seeing, yes, I met, that was where I met. It was in Hazelbeck, which is the next village down. That's where the horse and the man. It's a very, very old village. That's the Battle of Nasby. I'm going to tell you the year, but now it's gone out of my head. Um, no, I've not done a paranormal investigation there, but I do want to, but on the anniversary of the battle, because I know Naseby very, very well. I have taken photos, and I've seen all sorts um, over that way, So, but I've never done an investigation there. Yeah, wow, wow. And battlefields as well, that's an interesting one, because there are so many that, that, that people aren't aware of, Gavin, that are around. It's... It, it, it's probably one of the best places to, to try and get activity, isn't it? Most of the land probably been at some point been in a battle. Most of the towns were battled over at some point in history. So every, everywhere will have battle sites that we're not even aware of. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got another question uh, from Katie Stewart. I've had some great experience, uh, experiences in Naseby by the battlefield area just down the road from me. What it, oh, well, I'd love to know what experience is. I know I've seen I've seen things. You can just stop and take a picture there. And all sorts happens around Maysby. Um, I'm interested whether that's the back road to Solby or the road towards um, Clipston. Because she's seen them on. I've seen stuff on both sides. Yeah. Well, Gavin, lost you. you don't know the area. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gavin, Gavin where's, where's one of the most, see the places that you've been to, what's been your favourite location that you've, that you've investigated? What's been your all-time favourite since you've been... There's so many that I do like, um, and for different stories for each... But Grendon's probably got to have been one of my absolute favourites. Um, Haunted Antique Paranormal Research Centre, brilliant. You just you can't go without any activity there. But Grendon was my first event that I went there, but I've been there quite a few times, and it's just it's never let me down. It's somewhere that I've got unfinished business. I want to go there again and have more communication. But they, they seem to communicate with every single method. Um, there is one more, but I can't tell you where it is. A wonderful location, but it was privately that I went, and it's in the public eye, so I can't name where. But 
Yeah. That I managed to get a picture of a whole terrace, row of terraced houses that used to be there before they were knocked down. So oh, I've never, right. never ever taken a picture or anything like that. There was a physical item appeared in the photo. Um, yeah. Yeah. I wish I could talk about that one more, but that, that is a very good location. Okay, okay. Yeah, well, Brendan, Brendan, one of the best. Brendan, yeah, because it's not only just the house, is it, with Brendan? I mean, the grounds are massive as well, aren't they? Yeah. Um, immense. And the spirits will lead you to things there as well. They don't just leave you, they will fully communicate and lead you to show you things. Um, like I said, they'll communicate in any way possible, in every way possible. And there's so many different spirits there. Um, every time you turn around, there's there's another and another. Uh, just to communicate with near enough every room's got them in. There's animals, there's... <laughs> it's like the, the, the spirits that were upstairs, I don't know whether you got involved with the Transfiguration. It was the first place. I've got so many first memories there, you see. Because that was where yeah. I first did Transfiguration with the mirror and the face changing. Um, table tipping or chair tipping the heavy items. There's, there's just so many different men memories even pendulum was a first there for me as well yeah. with that experience there were just so many experiences that yeah. were a first it's a highlighted area it's a highlighted event for me it doesn't yeah. don't get me wrong there's lots that i've visited that i could rave <laughs> about yeah gavin it's coming up to nine it's Come been back. absolute pleasure sir um thank lovely you so i've enjoyed it thank you thank you so much for having uh for coming on i uh, hope everyone's enjoyed it as well um, we must meet up again soon, buddy. We must uh, get ourselves out on an investigation again. Would you Would you be up for that? Definitely. Oh, I'd love that. Um, I remember meeting you vividly at um, Brendan. It was a great night. It was, a great, it was very active. Yeah. That was, a, that, you know, it was a, that was a good event as well because the way they structured it, it was just like free-for-all. We go where we wanted to do what we wanted. And that was a perfect event. I'd be, I can't wait for the paranormal to open up properly again. Um, I know, mate. Yeah, I know because it, because it has uh, obviously over the past a couple of months, it has got uh, to, a, to to a stage where you know you're not able to go to events, obviously because of what's been going on and stuff like that. But it, it will be back. We will be back, mate. Uh, we, we will con we will continue it. Um, okay, right, okay, and Gavin, I'm gonna get going now. Again, thank you so 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 much for joining me. It's been an absolute amazing pleasure. Uh, whoever's been watching, uh, again, please share. Please like it. Please share it as much as you can on as many groups as you can. Uh, let's get um, let's get the psychic medium Gavin on the map where he deserves okay. to be. If anyone wants to, if anyone wants to find me on Facebook, just search at Psychic Gavin and it'll take you across to my page. Feel free to follow it. Um, I have got links across to my paranormal page and everything from there as well. But just search yeah. at Psychic Gavin and it'll bring it up. Okay, and I'll post the links as well on the thing below as well for you, Gavin. All right. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Mark. Okay, that's brilliant, mate. You take care, sir. See you soon. All right, take, take care. care. Thanks for watching. All right, take care, mate. Bye. 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 Bye.